Hello? Can you guys hear me? Cool. Um, thank you, everyone, for making it all the way back to the far reaches of the conference center for this talk, um, especially right after lunch. Um, I, uh, well, so the, those of us who are going to be presenting today about confronting complexity, Mark Baker from uh, Ubuntu, uh, I'm Kenny Johnston from Rackspace, and Hironori uh, Shina from Fujitsu. Uh, if you've read the abstract, you know what we wanted to go through today is both a recognition of where is OpenStack complex. Let's try to put our finger on the problem and say here's where we think operators uh, experience complexity with OpenStack, and then also talk through some of the initiatives uh, that the community and others are um, undertaking to work through and improve on that complexity. So hopefully we end on a kind of rosy note, not just uh, uh, whining about how complex everything is. Um, so before we start on all that, we just wanted to say up front, there's a bunch of complexity in OpenStack, um, especially uh, we kind of think of from two different personas. The first being you know, end users who are using the APIs, who are writing apps on top of the infrastructure as a service platform, um, and then operators, so people within organizations who are deploying and operating OpenStack. We really tried to focus on uh, the operator persona for this presentation, so that's why you might not see some of the end user complexity, whether that be API inconsistency or lack of um, tested SDKs for certain languages, et cetera. So um, that will be, we're just saying from the upfront, we're really trying to focus on operators. Um, so. How is OpenStack complex? What are some of the things people say about the complexity in OpenStack? Um, you hear things like, uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, it's really hard to figure out how to deploy it. What's the architecture I should use? Um, there's a lot of complexity in it. It's all got to be tackled by somebody, and typically that somebody is me, the operator. Um, all of this complexity really hinders the benefits I get from it. So this is supposed to be an innovation platform for me, but that complexity really hurts my ability to uh, extract some value out of that innovation platform. Um, you know, those, those are, uh, for those of us who've worked on OpenStack for a long time, those are hard things to hear. Um, it certainly uh, hurts when you think that all these great new features that you're adding into the service uh, really amounts to far less because of the complexity just to stand up the service as a, uh, at the start. Um, that's really not all. There's tons more comments uh, around the same. There's a high barrier to entry and it's a tough learning curve, meaning you know, if I, if I try to deploy a proof of concept of OpenStack, it's going to take um, my team, who's unfamiliar with OpenStack, months and months just to become familiar enough to deploy something that might be useful. Um, it's hard to operate. We hear a lot of people saying, I would love to deploy OpenStack, but you know what? I, I like my weekends. If I stand that thing up, I'm going to have to be managing this thing all day, all night, 24-7. Who's going to do that? I, I don't have a lot of confidence in kind of day two operations. It's a sprawling mess. There's too many projects. I don't know how to get involved in each specific project. Each project is, has its own community. Um, there are too many core components, so I have to bundle together all of these components. I hear people telling me that uh, Service X is really great for this feature set that I really want, um, but I have no trust in whether that or not that's reliable. Um, so these are all a bunch of verbatim comments that I've just showed you. Uh, Oh, so lastly, you know, there's a there's this sense that OpenStack is not a polished product like you might get from, uh, I think uh, this uh, this quote actually ended from third-party uh, other alternative packaged product, uh, but you know it's not OpenStack is at 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 its heart a core set of projects that you can make with, with make with what you want, um, but there's no kind of spit shine on it that you would might expect from a commercial product. Um, so where did all those come from? They actually came from our user survey report, uh, which anyone can go and, and download and view. I encourage everyone to take a look. We go through a NPS analysis of where people think uh, they're, why they rate OpenStack poorly, and if you look at the verbatim analysis, there's a lot of uh, highlights about complexity. Um, the, the interesting thing that I just want to highlight for all of those in the room, um, think about who took this survey. So these are people who, uh, probably successfully navigated the waters of complexity with OpenStack, were, did so as operators in, uh, in enough fashion that they actually got involved with the community. So they're spending their free time, probably their weekends, um, that they're also busy operating, uh, involved in the community. They're not only involved in the community, they are involved enough to even know that there was a user survey. And then even further, they're involved enough to know uh, and take the user survey. So these are a special breed of people who've taken the user survey. And even they have these kinds of comments. So think about all the people who didn't make it through that journey. Think about the people who were evaluating OpenStack maybe from afar and heard that it was too complex and so didn't take that jump. The people who 
uh, made it slightly down the POC, but decided they wanted to go to their kids' uh, basketball or soccer games instead of dealing with OpenStack and gave up on it. Um, just think about how, uh, what a small slice we got from, from this language and all the other people who were missing. That's why we really think of this complexity as the, the largest barrier to adoption for OpenStack. It's something that we all as a community need to go about um, tackling, and it's, it's really critical. Uh, and so those were just some verbatim comments. Uh, Mark is going to walk you through a couple of the, the very specific um, points of complexity within OpenStack. Thank you, Kenny. So um, this was kind of a slightly sarcastic, let's, let's double click or drill down into some of what that, uh, that complexity is. Uh, this was certainly a meme when we were putting the presentation together. So um, but before I do that, who's, who's already running OpenStack today? Right? Who's not running OpenStack? Is the reason you're not running it because you found it too complex? Or you just haven't gotten there yet? You just haven't got there yet, right? Well, you, you'll probably have it installed by Friday, right? So um, who's heard of the Homer? Yep. It's always good to get a Simpsons reference in a presentation, I think. So um, the first real aspect of complexity with, with OpenStack is that of choice, right? There are very many choices to be made, choices of project, choices of, uh, uh, of different things. And in just the same way that, that Homer decided that he wanted to build his own car, um, and he checked all of the boxes. I want all of these different things. I want every single extra possible, right? Because you have that he had that freedom of choice. Um, he ended up with something that, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, but it's not something that you would want to drive every day, right? You're probably going to be much better off with the, the Toyota there on the uh, yeah, your left, in terms of it's going to be much more reliable, much more serviceable, a better everyday drive right, than the Homer. And that's kind of the problem, I think, with, with OpenStack. right? There are a myriad of different choices right from the very beginning. So how do you get going? Well, first up is projects. Anyone know how many projects there are? 54, that's a great guess. That's somebody that's been on the Project Navigator, right? Did you write the project navigator? No. So that absolutely spot on. 54 different projects. Right? So this is just a selection of them. And you know uh, how the foundation breaks it down into what's considered core, the six in the middle, and then what's what is the big tent, right? The projects that sit outside that. And so if there's essentially 48 projects that sit in the big tent, how do you as an end user choose which ones you want? If you're interested in container, there's at least three containers, at least three different projects you may want to try, install, configure, integrate. Right? So there's a lot of choice to begin with. And choice, choice can be a confusing thing, right? It's a complex thing. Um, but there are other complexities. So, uh, and that starts right from the very beginning, deployment. right? How do you deploy your operating system? Bare metal provisioning. People use Cobbler, Pixie Scripts, Foreman. Lots of different ways of doing that. And each of those has their own communities and advocates around that will, will say, this is the best way of doing it. Likewise, OpenStack, right? There are many different ways to install OpenStack. You know, using Puppet, Ansible, Chef, Salt, tool of your choice, right? Very many, and you go and talk to any of those communities and they will uh, say that they, theirs is a great way of doing it, right? That choice, again, is confusing. Likewise, network configuration, you know, there, every different OpenStack cloud has a different network setup, storage, lots of choices there, uh, monitoring. People use Nagios, people use Abix, or the tool of their choice. But likewise, there are different projects emerge that sit in the big tent around monitoring. How do you navigate that to choose the one you want? And then like backups, snapshots, tools, projects, again, different ways to do it. Um, is this page familiar? Go onto the OpenStack website. This is the click on getting started, right? And there's at least six, seven different choices there. Install DevStack, go run it on a public cloud, go to the marketplace and try any of the sort of 13 or 14 different vendors that sit on there that will offer a distribution, each of, one, each of which is the leading OpenStack distribution, right? So making your choice is hard. Um, if you compare that, right? Has anyone tried this? Can you read what it is? Azure Stack, right? If you go into getting started on Azure Stack, it has like three buttons, right? Enter your name, click download, install it on Windows Server. Right? I'm not saying that Azure Stack's a great product. I've actually never tried it because I don't have Windows. But it's saying, for an end user, which is going to be the easiest path for me to take? Right? 
And then there's management, right? So we look at um, uh, operational management. Has anyone upgraded a cloud? No. Nope. People that are doing that are still actually doing it. They couldn't come to this session. So, uh, but likewise, you know, monitoring, troubleshooting, backups, patching, the operational stuff, right, is hard to do. And then lots of different opinions on how you should do it, lots of different tools you can do. So again, all of this choice uh, uh, is confusing. So how do we address it? Well, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Hironori, who's going to uh, uh, look at some of, the, some of the ways we think you can address this complexity. So how do we address complexity? So first, uh, we'd like to talk about community activities. So these are community activities for solving uh, the complexities of OpenStack. Better docs, uh, community initiatives, and user feedback. So first, uh, I'd like to introduce a documentation. Uh, OpenStack community uh, provides such documentation. And uh, community uh, continues enhancing uh, this documentation uh, to provide uh, good navigation to operators. <coughs> so there were uh, over 1,000 commits in OpenStack manual project in Mitaka. This is the third uh, largest number uh, among all projects. The effort to provide better documentation will be continued uh, in Newton cycle. Secondly, I'm going to, uh, to talk about uh, community initiatives. Oh, uh, I'd like to uh, explain uh, troubleshooting case uh, as an example. Troubleshooting is <coughs> one of uh, complex work in OpenStack. So, uh, so uh, this case, uh, it is hard to uh, analyze uh, log files uh, between services. To solve this problem, uh, community uh, has developed a request ID tracing feature. Uh, in this feature, uh, when a user calls an API, a requested ID is generated. Uh, this ID uh, is record recorded uh, in uh, log files uh, of services uh, which processes the uh, request. Finally, uh, the, the request ID is returned to the user uh, in an API response. If a problem happens, the user can uh, notify this ID to an operator. Then the operator can trace how the request was processed uh, in log files uh, in uh, all service uh, all related services uh, by using this ID. So, uh, another uh, issue of uh, troubleshooting uh, is regarding uh, error message of an API. Uh, recently, API working group in the community uh, published a guideline for errors for developers. Recently, the developers uh, of OpenStack community has started to follow the guideline to provide error messages <coughs> uh, in uh, consistency among projects. The detailed error messages uh, would make troubleshooting easier. Thanks, Hironori. 
And, and so here, Nori just gave an example of one of the community initiatives that are ongoing. Um, and so I'm just going to go back to the previous slide. There are tons of other initiatives. Think about when we talked about the complexities around upgrades, there's a whole um, rolling upgrades tag that many of the projects are working towards completing, which makes upgrades less disruptive. Uh, there's initiatives to build better fleet management and inventory management to help you manage your day two operations of running an OpenStack cloud. Um, there's the deployment projects that we talked about earlier. Um, from the docs perspective, they're working on revamping the uh, install guide so it's more inclusive of other projects. Um, we mentioned the project navigator earlier. Um, so there are lots of places in which the community is reacting to this known complexity and working kind of tackling it, uh, all kind of swarming to it and tackling it so that we, we improve this experience. Um, the heartening thing that I want to leave those of you who are, are thinking about OpenStack with is that we have a very robust community um, and a, a bunch of ways of getting this feedback to the right places. Um, and so those come in the form of, of user groups that uh, we, we just mentioned, but there's also some other, some other mechanisms. Um, for instance, the API working group, which is meant to tackle some of the complexity we find in, in API error codes and other, other portions of the API. We've got um, kind of user-focused or operator-focused working groups around enterprise, telco. There's a scientific working group that just started. The, the real function of these and kind of the muscle that we're building as part of a community is the ability to bring like-minded people who might share the same experience, um, have them talk about best practices, have them give direct feedback that is a little bit more genericized and consumable by the development community to then say, okay, we recognize this is a problem. We kind of understand your, your, your specific use case, and we're going to go tackle it. Um, there's other uh, working groups like the, the product work group, um, which we're all three uh, a member of, which kind of is a, a place to consolidate those user stories to say, okay, we, we've heard from the enterprise work group that um, rolling upgrades is a problem or upgrades are a problem. And so we've, we might write user stories to help define that so that the, the development team um, can then go implement them. And, and the development teams themselves are starting to build the muscle to tackle cross-project um, initiatives. Uh, it's, it's been going on for a number of cycles. but um, So there, there is a lot of um, work within the community to enable it uh, to kind of self-heal around these com complexity problems. And I think it's important to realize that, yes, it's complex today, but as a community, we've really rallied around um, this problem and are working to fix it in, in future iterations. Another work group I'll just quickly highlight is the, the user experience work group. Um, which is a newly formed group. I think they're in their, still in their first year. Um, but they're really tackling the, let's think about OpenStack from a persona perspective. So let's take that operator persona, think about the tasks that they need to do, and really build a set of, um, a set of experiences across projects um, that improve that experience of, a, of an operator. Um, a really great resource for the development teams and the product work group and others, um, kind of just rounding out our community of um, user feedback options. Uh, so that we can make sure that we're honing in on the problems that are most important to our users. Um, so with that, there's, we, we talked about the community portion. There's a whole other portion around curation, which is how do you take the, um, the what, what is out there in the community, the unlimited amount of choice, and even if the community provides great data, and get to kind of more specified prescriptive um, deployments and tools for OpenStack. And Mark's going to cover that for, you, for us real quick. Thank you. So. <clears throat> So curation is essentially leaving that choice making, not leaving it up to other people, but getting other people to, to, to make some of those choices for you, right? So taking some input. And, and most, you know, often you think about museum create, uh, curators that are choosing which artifacts and things to, to display. And this is very, very similar. We, we kind of debated a little as to what to call this section, but we decided on curation because it kind of sounded smart and it was um, kind of, Quite a, quite a good way of describing it. So this is people that are making choices uh, on your behalf. Um, and we divided, again, this into, into two sections. So on the, on the left-hand side there, community curation. Easy for me to say. Um, community curation. So there are a number of um, projects and working groups or initiatives, if you like, around um, curating or making selections about how you go about deploying OpenStack and managing it. So uh, some of those, OpenStack, Ansible is being a good example, uh, Puppet, Chef, the Cola, Triple O, uh, and Fuel as being installers and managers for OpenStack that don't necessarily let you install all uh, 48 non-core projects, right? That are, have, do have an opinion over the projects that they, they will support, do have an opinion about the way that they should be in, deployed, 
and about the configuration. Right? Now, the good thing is that you can go in and you can disagree with some of those and make some changes. Right? So it's, it, it can be quite flexible. But it gives you a very good starting point. And people, people that have installed OpenStack, did you use any of those methods on the left? OK, clearly need to do Oh, thank you, sir, at the back. Good. So uh, somebody did. Yes, exactly. But then uh, if you look on the other side, it's uh, kind of corporate, corporate curation, right? And so these are distributions, by and large, right? So, so companies or communities that are making, building an OpenStack distribution with a set of projects integrating those projects together and often wrapping them around with some tools which may or may not be part of OpenStack, right? And that provides, for, for a lot of people, and I think this is you know, the way that many people increasingly are, uh, uh, are, are installing and managing their OpenStack environments. Um, but whether it's RDO, Ubuntu, Rackspace, Helion, Marantis, SUSE, and very many more, right? There are many more that's in that space. These are curated uh, implementations of OpenStack. So, um, and to say, I think that's, that's generally the way that the market is going. So again, taken from the last survey that uh, came out, data came out a couple of weeks ago, um, unmodified packages from the operating system and, and unmodified packages from a distribution essentially is by far the most popular way of installing OpenStack, right? Compare and contrast that. If you only go back a couple of years ago, so many people were building packages themselves or modifying packages, right? But there's an old adage if you're a, you know, obviously I work for a Linux distribution uh, and have done for a long time, it's just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? So freedom in OpenStack is something that we love, it's something that we celebrate, but it's something that you need to be really careful about, right? Just because you can modify, just because you can think, uh, change things, doesn't mean that you should change them. And actually, there are very good reasons that these distributions, whether uh, you know, it's Ubuntu, Rackspace, or whatever, have made the choices that they have done. Right, so that curation, something that you place some trust in, but it's something you, uh, 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 you have to kind of respect to. Of course, they don't always get it right all the time. Um, and that kind of comes with a warning, right? So it's prescriptive. Curation can be prescriptive. It means that it does have an opinion uh, on how things like the networking is set up, the architecture, whether it could be a converged architecture, for example, or separate architecture with storage and data, uh, storage and compute, rather. Um, what kind of storage is chosen, right? Do you use Ceph, do you use Cinder, do you use Swift, et cetera? Uh, different versions, different versions of uh, projects that uh, are taken. And then the hardware requirements, right? Some distributions you can run on a single laptop, others have a minimum of whatever it is, six machines. So when you're looking at curation of, or curated OpenStack implementations, whilst that may be a nice path to be able to go up on ramp onto OpenStack pretty easily. You do need to be ensure that the choices that have been made on your behalf are, are ones that are going to deliver the value that you need for your business, right? So the final final piece of curation is in terms of consumption. Does anyone use a fully managed service here? No. Again, an opportunity for someone there. But um, you know, one of the reasons that public cloud is so um, popular is that it's very, very easy to go and consume that service, right? Credit card, sign up, off I go, access to my VMs very, very quickly, right? It's consumed as a service. And this is, I think, also becoming more popular in OpenStack. There are a number of different companies, Bluebox and, and others, uh, that will offer a fully managed service uh, for, your, for your environment. Rackspace, I'm sure, do it too. So, um, and that is just consumed as a utility, right? You don't know what choices have been made around the storage or necessarily around the network or what hardware is being used. And actually, you don't care. In the same way, you don't really care what hardware is underneath Amazon, right? Or how that's configured, because you're just consuming as it as a service. Uh, and same with virtual private cloud, too, right? So um, for many people, the fastest on-ramp to OpenStack and addressing that complexity is to just let somebody else deal with it. So what do you think? This is opportunity for you in the audience. What do you think? Does anyone have any ideas of how we, either through curation or through, uh, through the community, can help uh, address some of the complexity? Are we on the right path? Yes, sir.
So that's kind of like a distribution comparison, you think? Exactly. Right. And so the, just to repeat the question, it was the, uh, having done some research uh, to compare different distributions and see what the differences between them are, uh, you felt like you were kind of trailblazing there. Right. So who, has anyone done uh, comparisons of distributions here? OK. So um, there are, I certainly know of, of at least one sort of analyst type comparison that says x is good for NFV and y is good for, for, for whatever it is stuff. But then, no, you're right. There's not a lot of that. And the marketplace today, the OpenStack marketplace, is very generic, right? It lets the vendors that, that publish the distribution write what they want about the distribution, which is why all of the distributions are number one and the best, right? So, and, and it, but it's, it's difficult to, to do that. And it, I think that's a, that's a very good thing to be, it's not something that, you know, we as vendors, I work for a vendor, so it'd be very hard for, for me to be able to do that objectively. But I think there's, there's definitely an opportunity for, whether it's analysts or community, to, to, to do some kind of comparison to, to help people to do that, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll try and summarize, and please cr correct me if I don't get this right, is that to build an OpenStack environment, even just to test it out and check it out, can take as many resources as to build a big one. So that could be off-putting, or why not just build a big one, right? Yeah, yeah, a different opinion, right? So, so yes, it's an obstacle that needs to be overcome. Yeah, so I, I mean, I agree, and, and that's often, um, who runs DevStack here, yeah. right? DevStack is kind of run it on a laptop, pretty easy, it's to develop a thing, but it's not a cloud, it's a, you know, it's a development environment, it allows you to be able to develop. Uh, but an awful lot of people will try that because I can run it on my laptop and I don't need to go and negotiate with the networking and storage teams to be able to, 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 to do it. Uh, and of course they look at it and think, oh, this is no, you know, it's not what I wanna do, right? So yes, there are distributions that you can run on a single machine, but, um, and again, that can be complex to, to set up. So yes, I think it's a, it's a very valid point, and maybe that's something that we want to try and do. I remember back in, I can't remember, a few years ago, it was early, early, early on in OpenStack Live, you could put an OpenStack distribution on a USB and run it from that, right? Maybe that's, that's, that's an approach we want to look at again. Good comment. Yes, sir. Right. Sure. So again, I'll try and summarize. Is that is that um, perhaps we need better documentation about reference architecture for different types of an implementation. Do you think that's by vertical or by industry segment or use case or all of those things? All of those things. Kenny, did you want, I know that there has been work on reference architectures that, that's happened yeah. in, the, in the working groups perhaps. Yeah. So there is a document on docs.openstock.org that's the, ref, the architecture reference guide which will show you some architectures. But I think another point you're bringing up is of all the different deployment tooling projects that we have out there, they all have a different um, prescription for reference architecture, and that isn't 
displayed in a way that you can see on a table, like which one of these should I choose? There's no comparison across those deployment projects. Um, so from one perspective, if you are approaching it as a um, just kind of native, how should I architect this, uh, my OpenStack deployment? I think there is some good documentation and, and we can certainly uh, work as a community to improve it. Um, but I would point you to the architecture guide for that. But I do think I'm, I'm, I'm have an idea of, of improving the choice of deployment tooling that you might use, whether <coughs> whether you use Fuel or um, Triple O or OpenStack Ansible or Cola, um, their architectures are not as opaque as they probably should be in kind of one place when you make a choice. Yeah, totally agree. I think we might be out of time. Was well, that actually, we, ha we do have time, but uh, okay. is there any other questions? Other questions? Yeah, um, so I don't know the exact URL, but it essentially uh, shows a, uh, all the different projects in the, op in the big tent and gives different metrics on them. Um, so one of the things that we brought about with the big tent is something called project metadata tagging. So essentially there are um, tags that we, we that different projects apply for, whether that might be um, that it has some security vulnerability testing, that it's considered mature, that it's considered a um, being worked on by a large number or, or a variety of different companies. Um, and there are other sort of kind of capability specific tags, but those tags are aggregated and presented in a kind of visual way uh, via the Project Navigator. I think it also has, um, I don't know if it's a, a voted on degree of maturity, so it's kind of how long the project's been around. But it's a way for you to, at a glance, get an idea of, you know, hey, this um, Zakar messaging service, how, how reliable should I consider it? Um, sh should, I, should I invest in putting this as a part of my deployment? Um, I, again, I don't have the exact URL, but if you go to openstack.org into software, uh, I know it's somewhere in that section. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I don't I'll repeat your oh yeah, sorry, the question was how do you, how do, how do the project teams prioritize the work that they're going to work on in terms of adding new features? Um, you know, OpenStack is a duocracy, right? We're a, a set of developers who do what they want to do and we have a governance board for ensuring that when, governance model for when they do, when, when code is added that it doesn't break things and that, you know, it's, it's generally accepted by the rest of the community. but. Someone just saying, hey, this is a really big problem, I think we should fix it, does not make anything get fixed until somebody actually actually does it. Um, and all of these, every single developer, the vast majority of developers who work on OpenStack are working for some corporate entity. Um, so, uh, you know, there's some mechanisms as a product work group. Again, you know, the, the reason why Mark and I and Hin Hinori are standing on stage together is because we met through this product work group and we try to prioritize to say, oh, you know, we're hearing from our customers and Mark's hearing from his customers, this thing is a problem, we should try to tackle it universally. Um, and the developers, obviously, at the individual project level, do the same. Um, but there is no stack-ranked list of, of uh, features. Uh, you know, individual projects in the design summit sessions that they're having here uh, across the building, uh, across the way in the Hilton, are going through that process this week, saying, "What are the things we should work on? Um, who's going to do what?" Is essentially the, the statement, not "What are the things we should work on?" It's who's willing to put in the time to um, develop on a specific feature. Um, so, in that sense, it's not a typical software development model. You are, um, if, if, if there are things that you want to see in OpenStack, then we encourage you to come and participate in the product group, and you can uh, uh, write a, uh, a, a user story and write a spec, and it doesn't mean it'll get done. The only way to ensure it gets done is to do it yourself, but you can put it forward and at least uh, see if, if it's a common requirement. Well, I think. I think we now are out of time. So, so uh, uh, if there's any other questions, please grab us in the uh, in the halls. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for listening.